All right, so uh, I guess we can get going. Um, so I assume most of the people here are just waiting for whiskey. Um, so the, uh, I'll be talking about the support for performance tools in Zen. Uh, it's a little bit of a background. Uh, when I joined Oracle earlier this year, uh, Conrad and I, uh, Conrad Wilk uh, and I uh, started talking about things that uh, needs to be worked on. And most of these things were kind of performance related. And as we were going over these things, it appeared that yes, these things are clearly performance related and they seem to be obvious, obvious performance problems, except that we actually didn't measure that there was a performance problem. And uh, as we were going project to project, I don't remember what the projects were, it was kind of one thing after another. Yes, it's obvious, but we don't know. And that sort of reminded me of a professor, math professor at school, who um, go into this insane you know, theory proof and in, in the middle, he would make an assertion and he would say, well, isn't that obvious? And you really shouldn't nod your head. Because then he would say, well, Mr. Ostrovsky, in my case, then you have 30 seconds to prove that it is obvious. Um, I hated the guy. And <laughs> so after going through this project with Conard, we decided that uh, we probably need to uh, do something about the tools or lack, lack of the tools, I guess. So, yes, I have agenda. Um, so, um, before, I guess, we go into uh, what this project is about, it may be worth uh, kind of going over the uh, methods that people usually use to measure performance. Um, first one is timing. It's obvious. You look at your watch and you see how long things uh, take. Um, and so if you, you know, apply a patch and your system took one minute, uh, before the patch, and it took, you know, until next Thursday after the patch, you kind of know that you have a problem with the patch. So there is nothing uh, surprising there. Uh, second thing you do after, usually after you do uh, uh, measure timing, is you start count things. And um, if you only use software, usually you count things by, you know, adding a counter to your code and incrementing this counter, and at the end of the run or at the end of the routine, you print the counter and you say, well, it was five, this routine was executed five times. And hardware people kind of figured maybe we should help, and uh, they added support for performance counters for various events, you know, cache miss, DLB miss, data load, and all these sorts of things. Um, so this is all good, but uh, you really need to know uh, where to count, where to insert your counter if, in case of software. So that's where sampling uh, comes in. Uh, and in the, when you sample your uh, your program your system, every so often uh, you interrupt your program, you look at where you were interrupted, you write it out, and then <coughs> at the end of the day you uh, kind of look at where were you interrupted most of the time, and that's probably the place that you, you should concentrate on. Uh, and again, uh, if you're using a software, a typical uh, thing to sample is by using a timer, your timer interrupts every, you know, so often, and you write out information about where you were. Uh, for hardware, people usually use either performance counters, so they load the, uh, uh, the counter register with a value and then either increment or decrement it, and when it hits zero, you get an interrupt and you do the same thing as a software. Uh, counters are sort of notoriously impre imprecise, so if you want to really go deep and find out where exactly your program is, uh, at the instruction level, counters are not necessarily the best tool. So the hardware vendors came up with uh, special uh, widgets in their PMU. Uh, AMD has the um, IBS, which is instructions-based uh, sampling, and Intel has PEBS, which I don't remember what it stands for, but I assume S is for sampling. Um, and finally, uh, people use tracing, wh where they kind of they write out uh, where you were, uh, which points of, exec uh, of um, execution you passed through. So again, you write out uh, where you were, and then you look at the code and say, well, I usually go this path, and maybe I should do something about it. Um, with tracing, again, uh, you just uh, you know, insert probes in your, in your code, and uh, uh, the, as you pass through those probes, you <coughs> write them out. Uh, for hardware, uh, Intel has the uh, branch trace something, again. Um, and S, S doesn't stand for, uh, stand for something. 
Um, and I don't really uh, know what the AMD story here is. I think they also have something. Um, so let's go over existing uh, tool situation with, with Zen, what we have now. So we should probably look separately at guests and uh, a hypervisor. So for software methods, uh, presumably any guest, HVM or PV guest, should, use, should be able to use any tool. And I say presumably because I haven't tested all of them. But it seems like any tool sh should be uh, usable. For hardware, uh, the story is, is different between HVM and PV. So for HVM, we've had for the last few years, uh, we had support for a VPMU module uh, that supports uh, counters for both AMD and uh, uh, Intel. And for uh, Intel, it also supports uh, BTS. And presumably, any tool that uh, uses uh, those features <coughs> that you run in HVM domain should, should work. And we know that perf works, O profile works. Um, I, I would think that any other tool should work. Uh, for PV, this, the uh, story is a little bit uh, less happy. Uh, the only tool, well, that, not the only tool, but I guess the most, uh, mostly, why, the mostly known tool is Xeno Profile, um, which is uh, kind of uh, written on top of existing O Profile that everybody knows and loves. Um, and again, that's the only tool I can think of. Uh, for hypervisor, there is a bunch of software tools that are part of the tree, actually, that you use for uh, to measure performance, then trace, analyze, well, tons of tools that start with the word Zen. Um, and to do hardware profiling, again, Zeno profile is uh, pretty much the, the, the only tool. There are probably some homegrown <coughs> tools. Uh, we in Oracle, I think, had uh, some internal tool, that, but it's not upstreamable, so that's the only one that we can really uh, talk here. So. Um, so the question was, what do we go with? What's the tool that we should pick and uh, t uh, target for this project? So first of all, why not go with the Xeno profile? And uh, because it's a, it's a good tool. Uh, well, first of all, it's not in the tree. So the Zen part is in the tree and has been in the tree for a while. Uh, but the other two parts, the, um, the kernel part, the Linux kernel part, and the tools part is not. And I believe the la latest patches are for 2.6.32, if, if that. And so you would have to port them every time you have a new, new release. Well, not every time, but often. And that's not very sustainable. Second, uh, the O profile on, on, on which the Zeno profile is based is not really, um, it's in maintenance mode now. So bugs, bug fixes go there but new features are not. So it's, it has limited kind of uh, runway in front of it, which is why we decided that uh, that's probably not the way to go. And the alternative seemed to be uh, perf uh, for, for exactly reasons that Xeno profile is not, which is it's in the tree, it's a default uh, performance measurement tool for uh, Linux kernel, uh, for, for hardware me measurement. Well, it, not just hardware measurement, actually. <clears throat> it's in very active development. Uh, so pretty much any time, uh, for, f from hardware perspective, any time a, a vendor comes up with a new feature in the, uh, uh, in the PMU, uh, usually patches uh, from, from those vendors actually uh, follow. Um, and uh, it has lots of features. Some are you know, counters and sampling and all that stuff related. And it, it has also other uh, tracing features, uh, software tracing features. Um, I also hear that the people are actually thinking about using Perf for power management and even for RAS. I don't know where, where this is going, but this is, uh, there are some serious conversations uh, happening about that. So, Perf it is. Um, so these are kind of random thoughts that uh, I had when I started working on this. Uh, these are desired properties. Um, and interestingly enough, I don't have a uh, working tool as a desired property. So that's just, it's just a side effect. Um, so first of all, as I said, uh, we have um, uh, VPMU, which is a uh, uh, support for PMU for HVM guests. And uh, given that, it appeared that this, the functionality for supporting uh, paragraphal guests and, and, and the hypervisor would be similar, it would probably make sense to uh, 
try to reuse uh, as much as possible of VPMU to support any type of guest and the hypervisor itself. Uh, second of all, um, I really wanted, at least initially, to uh, confine the Linux side changes, at least on the kernel side, to Arch x86 Zen. I didn't want to go outside the tree for a variety of reasons. Um, uh, on the other hand, as kind of the thinking progressed, I could see that there will be places where we would need to make changes to uh, places outside those, uh, those directory, that, that directory. So that kind of implies the stage development. So I think uh, what, uh, what I wanted to do is the first stage would be we live in uh, you know, Arch x86 Zen and then we try to uh, go out. And also, even though we are uh, targeting perf, really didn't want to preclude you know, other tools from using it, like OProfile, and uh, we're just talking about VTune or something. Uh, presumably, you would still have to make some changes, I think, to you know, uh, hook, it, hook it up, but they should be fairly minimal. Um, so I don't know whether I should call it high-level design features. Again, these are kind of random things that I remember about uh, what happened. So uh, first of all, uh, we manage uh, the PMU hardware in uh, VPMU for, for, for HVM. Um, and uh, what this implies, there are two things that VPMU really manages. It manages the state of the VPMU, you know, whether it's running, it's stopped, it's saved, loaded, there are five or six states. Uh, and second is the VPMU context, which is really the register state. Um, so when, you know, a new guest uh, gets on the CPU, the, the, all the registers are loaded into the, the hardware and things continue on their way. Um, so the way it works is, is pretty simple. There's uh, no magic about it. Uh, when the tool runs, it loads the, uh, the registers with uh, whatever value it wants to uh, load it with. And then at some point when the, uh, usually when the uh, register hits, you know, zero or overflows, uh, uh, in an uh, interrupt occurs, uh, the uh, Zen runs a handler, and it does two things. Well, there's more things, but the, uh, the things that I mentioned here are two things. One, it passes the uh, uh, instruction pointer to, uh, to the guest, to the uh, to PV guest, I guess, DOM0 or, or, or uh, DOM0 uh, of where, where this uh, interrupt happened. And the second thing, it actually, um, you don't have to do it, but this is the kind of optimization that seemed to be uh, make sense. It passes the uh, register, the, the part of the VPMU actually context, the, the register part of it, uh, to, uh, to Linux. And the reason is when the perf handler runs, it makes a fair amount of accesses to, uh, to the registers. And if we, want, if we are accessing those registers from, uh, from uh, DOM0 or from, from PV guest, I guess, every MSR access is a trap. So, and it didn't seem like there is a reason to, uh, to do this uh, when we can just pass all those registers to DOM0 and make it, you know, uh, go over those registers there. So I call it emulate PMU, but emulate is probably too big a word. It's really just an array of registers. And, um, that's what uh, uh, the perf handler will do. Um, oh, and I should mention that when, when the interrupt happens, the uh, Zen handler stops the, um, uh, uh, the PMU completely. So it stops other counters as well, and that's done mostly for simplicity because you don't want to get another counter fire up while, while you're processing uh, the current interrupt. And if, to me, it, it seems like it won't make much difference uh, in terms of kind of getting the accurate results. So when uh, perf um, handler uh, is done with, with processing the, uh, the interrupt, so it uh, reads, reads the value of the counters, writes out the, uh, the data that it wants, it does a hypercall, there's a new hypercall. Uh, it does a hypercall down to uh, Zen, uh, Zen reloads the, the counters and continues running. And this is repeated many times. Um, another thing to, uh, worth uh, mentioning is there are two modes of running uh, perf. Yes, this is probably perf specific. Uh, one is kind of your regular vanilla uh, perf when you're running it in, in a domain and if it's a PV domain, it measures its own performance. If it's DOM0, it measures its uh, performance plus uh, the hypervisor. Uh, there is also a global profile mode 
which, which I was kind of taken, uh, took from uh, Zeno Profile has a similar feature and Perf KVM actually has a similar feature. So I figured why not have it for Zen as well, which is uh, when uh, Zen, uh, the uh, Perf running in DOM0 profiles everybody, it profiles itself, hypervisor and all, and all the guests. And in that mode, the PMU is actually disabled in, uh, in the guest. Uh, another thing worth mentioning, it, perhaps, is um, so the interrupts that are taken by Zen on counter overflow can be either an APIC interrupt, which is what we have now for VPMU, uh, or uh, it can be an NMI interrupt, which is more useful uh, when you want to profile hypervisor and hypervisor. There are you know uh, pieces of uh, code, obviously, that run with interrupts disabled, and. If you want to profile those, you want to run in NMI mode. So, uh, of course, because it's stage one, it comes with limitations. Um, first of all, if you want to get accurate results, uh, you should really pin the um, vCPUs to uh, pin vCPUs. And the reason is mostly because, uh, in, as I said, I, do, I didn't want to modify non-Zen uh, parts of code. And at this point, there is no place for us to stick the PCPU value in the, in the perf kind of data structure. So for now, I figured, well, we'll, we'll pin it and we'll assume that VCPU <coughs> is, uh, is, is kind of known when, when it, uh, where it is. The second one is um, where probably the booze should uh, start. Uh, you can only profile a hypervisor on the CPUs where DOM0 is running. So if you have, you know, 32 core system and your DOM0 runs on first four cores, cores uh, four through 31 will not get profiled in the hypervisor. Um, and other uh, kind of not too big limitations. Uh, one is the sampling is not supported uh, and that's partly because it's not supported in VPMU anyway. So that's, that's a new feature. Uh, and uh, currently, there is no backtrace support for hypervisor. So you can still get the backtraces for, uh, for the guests, DOM0 or not DOM0, it doesn't matter. But the hypervisor, uh, you will not get, you actually will get the, tra the backtrace, but it, it will probably be incorrect. Um, status, so we went through a couple of um, uh, versions uh, on the mailing list for Zen patches. And I was working on V3 and I was hoping to get it in 4.4, and then I discovered some unpleasant things. And so it says 4.4 is unlikely, and 3 Lancer is a hell no. Um, it's not going to happen for 4.4. Um, uh, so, and uh, there, there are three sets of patches, really, for, for, for this, this whole uh, thing. One is the uh, Zen patch, uh, Zen patches, and this is probably the main uh, part of the uh, patch set. Then there is a, a bunch of patches for Linux, and they are driven by Zen patches because <coughs> th that's what defines the uh, interfaces and all, all, all those things. And finally, there is um, changes to perf uh, user land part, um, mostly to make it understand you know symbol tables, uh, to make it know where to look for Zen symbols and all that stuff. So so that's obviously not uh, uh, Zen specific. That's in generic code. Um, so future enhancements, and uh, you can call them enhancements, you can call them really, really making things uh, work properly. Uh, you address the limitations from stage one. The main one is, so pinning requirement I think is, is fairly easy. There is actually a reserved field in the sampling data, which presumably is where we can uh, stuff the uh, uh, information about the, both the domain ID and the uh, uh, PCPU ID. And in fact, uh, the, the, even the current patches, they already pass this information to Linux. It's just that Linux doesn't know w what to do with it, where to put it. Uh, the second one, the uh, supporting, you know, uh, the full, uh, full, amount of, full number of uh, PCPUs, that will be more involved. Let's leave it at that. Uh, it will require changes to uh, uh, Linux uh, perf part. I, I have a couple of ideas, but um, I haven't uh, tried them out yet. Um, we need to start supporting uh, PEBs and uh, you know sam sampling features. A again, this is if you're interested in things like you know know exactly which instruction is causing you a problem, 
you really want to have sampling mechanisms. Um, you, uh, like if you are tracing, you know, try, trying to find out the hot, uh, find the hot lock, for example, uh, and your lock routine is in line, you will not get the right pointer, most likely. You will get a pointer to something that says add, you know, AX plus one, and you'll say, well, why is this a hot uh, instruction? Um, another thing that uh, I was thinking about is, so perf supports uh, tracing. Uh, you know, uh, there's a, tons of uh, software uh, uh, trace points uh, in kernel, and we have a Zen trace. So it may be possible to um, convert uh, those trace points into something that uh, perf will understand. And uh, the, the goodness about uh, having perf is it has some statistical analysis tools in it that, that, that are pretty nice the, if you have, you know, uh, traces. Uh, oh, and I didn't put here the backtrace support. That should be fairly easy. Uh, there is not much magic to it. Uh, and that I think, yeah, so this is, I, I was thinking, should I run a demo, should I not run a demo? And every time I run a demo, I crash and it's awkward. So I just took the pictures. Um, so this is a, if, if you use perf, this is the picture that you know very well. So you will notice that there is a you know a bunch of uh, probes that are happening, and when he's Zen Sims, that's sample taken uh, in in the hypervisor. Um, so it, it's a pretty idle system. So there is nothing uh, really interesting here. Um, and uh, yeah, and this is the, the the global mode. So we have a guest uh, running there, and I think there are five uh, samples for uh, for for the guest. They're all in, I don't have any user land samples for, uh, in the guest. They're all in uh, kernel. Um, oh, and um, you, you'll see that I actually use a perf KVM record and report. It's, just, it's, it's not by accident. I didn't have a typo there. It, it is actually the command that I used. Um, I, presumably when I clean up the patch, it will be called perf zen. Um, um, and you will probably see that I have, still have bugs. But um, I actually know where this bug is coming from. We'll see that the yes zero has address in, in, uh, in the hypervisor. So that's clearly wrong. Um, but uh, that, that, that actually happens because this, this sample was probably taken during the scheduling. So the guest was marked as running, but it actually hasn't started ex executing. So that's why there is a hypervisor address. So that's all, folks. Questions? Uh, first, I'm, gonna, um, I'm very happy to see um, a tree, a, a perf can, perf can profile Z itself. Actually, when I, when I, I did, did the optimization, perform optimization for, for my project, I got a lot of problems in pro, pro, profiling the zine. Uh, one question here, I just in, uh, see in this diagram, I didn't see the, uh, the capability of a backtrace. So for example- You, you one, didn't see what? Backtrace. For yes, example, yes. Backtrace from, from DOM zero to zine. So, so well, well, as I said, I didn't actually run it with, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't click. Now, I will run the demo because I can crash now. So this is, for example, I can run perf uh, top. And uh, you can see there are you know, a few things. So if you want to see a backtrace, I can actually run yes. backtrace here. So if I say uh, perf, uh, yeah, msg. What's that? Top dash. Uh, to, uh, no, it doesn't work. No. I. <laughs> so we do something, and then we. So do we have any Zen samples? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you may or may not. This is probably wrong stack, most likely, because oh. because because we, I, I read the stack from from uh, from kernel. Yes. And it. It's probably the stack in Zen is gone by then, by now. 
So okay. all, all, all really that needs to happen is at the time of interrupt, you pass the rep to the guest and you pass the uh, stack trace, which is... Yeah, if the uh, result is accurate and uh, believable, then that is uh, really helpful because uh, we can find um, uh, what uh, uh, the corner, maybe from, from, the, uh, from the domain zero, we could optimize the uh, domain zero, for example, to reduce the hyper core. So in, uh, so in this way, we can improve performance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And you actually know that, that you have a problem. Yes. It's not that you think you have a problem, you know that you have a problem. Yeah, great. Thank you. It's just a simple question. I think you said uh, for the future work, it's about enable PBS. Uh, and the, I, I, I just want to say something about the PBS because uh, <coughs> PBS uh, cannot work uh, if the event happens during the VM exit or VM entry. So if you really want to enable PBS, you uh, maybe you keep in mind that it cannot work due to the hardware limitation. That's sad. Do you, well, talk to your hardware. Yeah, I think if, if you them. wish, I think I will yeah. give you more details offline yeah. about but, why. But, but it, we should be able to at least uh, use it in, uh, in kernel and uh, user space. Even if we can, can do, cannot do sampling for the hypervisor, we can still do it for the, uh, the guests. Uh, I think it's, as long as you, you can make sure, for example, you are turning on the PBS, right, and uh, there's no VM entry, VM exit. For example, you focus on seeing the PV part, maybe it's okay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, so you mentioned it's unlikely you get this fully working on 4.4, uh, but you are actively working on it. So um, what do you expect to finish by then? And how likely are you know, I learned, I learned enough not to it? answer these types of questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I have one outstanding bug that I, that I need to fig figure out how, how to fix. Uh, and then uh, I need to kind of clean up code and you know, do these sorts of things and go through another round on, on the list. Um, I, I don't expect, well, I don't expect uh, to have any issues on the, on the Linux kernel side. And again, that's what I don't expect. Um, there are maybe some questions uh, about the perf, the, the, the user land uh, part. Although I think, actually, I don't think I ever tried it. The, the vanilla perf will still work, but it won't work for, for, for a hypervisor because it doesn't know where to look for symbols. Other questions? Um, are your patches available in the uh, open source already? Or? Well, I posted uh, v2, uh, v2 for Zen and v1 for Linux, but v1 for Linux will not work with uh, v2 for Zen. Okay. So, so if you're really adventurous, you can pull the v1s for both Linux and Zen and see. And, and, or, or just email it to me and I'll... Uh, okay, 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 thank you. You'll regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Uh, 